Hey, how's it going? So today I'm going to go over five mistakes you want to avoid if you're running Google ads in auto detailing. This is going to apply to auto detailing. So if you have a shop or mobile auto detailing, if you're mobile and um, yeah, it's going to be a pretty quick, pretty simple video. If you do want a more in-depth video, like a full on tutorial, um, I'll leave that link in the description below. It's specific for auto detailing. If you're not in auto detailing, it still does apply. The processes uh, are still the same. So uh, if you're new here, my name is Chris. Um, this whole channel is just all about Google ads and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you do want to see more content like this, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. I will be uploading more uh, going forward this year. So uh, let's just jump into the first point. All right. So the first mistake you want to avoid when it comes to running, not just an auto detailing campaign, but really just any kind of Google ads campaign. If you're doing a local uh, kind of local lead gen, local search network campaign, you want to disable Google display network. The reason why this is important is if you leave that enabled, Google will take your ad and then show it uh, essentially as a display ad on other websites. So you don't really have a lot of control over it. And typically the traffic that comes from that, it might be cheaper, but it will usually not convert very well. So I always see Google Display Network pretty much just wasting budget. So right off the bat, I would just make sure Google Display Network is disabled. On top of that, I typically only run my campaign search network. So this other little checkbox check box here, uh, it's Google Search Partners. Um, they kind of disguise this a little bit because they have it under search network. So it kind of looks like you're disabling search network. I typically disable Google Search Partners as well. It can work. Um, but over the course of this year, the search traffic quality seems to have gone down a little bit. Again, this is really niche dependent for me personally. I just stick to search network. So your ads are only going to show up in Google search, uh, search partners is pretty similar to display network, but your ads can show up in other, uh, on other websites or other search engines on other websites. So you can get a little bit of cheaper traffic, but the problem is you just kind of don't have the control. Um, and I've seen some campaigns with search partners enabled and it's just wasting budget. Um, so at the very least, make sure display network is disabled. Um, and then as your campaign gets going, you can see if search partners is actually wasting that money or not. And if it is, you can just disable it. So at the very least, get rid of display network. So the second mistake you want to avoid is not having negative keywords. It might sound a little bit weird, but uh, what negative keywords are is they're essentially the opposite of keywords. And the reason why you want to have them in there is they weed out all of the crap that you don't want to show up for. Um, so obviously if you watch any of my other videos, you want to make sure you have the right uh, match types on your keywords. So either phrase or exact match, but on top of that, you want to make sure you have negative keywords in your campaign. If you don't have negative keywords, um, your ads can end up showing for competitors, uh, products, all that kind of stuff. And layering in these negative keywords helps your campaign uh, essentially perform better because you're weeding out all the crap traffic. Now, when it comes to how many you should have on a campaign, it really depends. Again, it's very niche specific. Also, if you're running more broad match keywords, which I personally don't do, you're going to want to have a lot more negative keywords. Um, but I typically, when I'm running a campaign, I will go through a local market. I'll pull all the competitor names. I'll pull the names of big brands. I will pull the names of products. Um, I'll go through the keyword planner and I will pull out uh, really anything that I can find um, that I don't want my ads showing up for. So if you're uh, advertising, you know, for auto detailing services, you don't want your ads showing up for products. So negative out all of the brand names, uh, negative out, you know, like AutoZone, things like that, and just keep putting more and more in. Honestly, I prefer having as many as possible because the more the better, as long as you're not preventing your ads from showing, uh, it's fine. So in this campaign, I have 1,752. You don't have to start with that many. Um, this is built up over time through looking at the search terms, adding in negatives from there. Um, I've got the state names and abbreviations of all the other states, all that kind of stuff. And then you can also go online and find, if you just Google um, common negative keywords for Google ads, a lot of people put together lists of keywords that you don't want to show up for, like free, uh, sale, bargain, all that kind of stuff. So second thing you want to make sure you have in your campaign is negative keywords. The third example I see is not sending your traffic to a dedicated landing page. Uh, now a landing page is essentially a page that is specifically designed to convert somebody into a lead. It's a very simple, very focused page um, with not a lot of distractions. And I'll show you a couple examples in just a second. 
But the reason why it's important is by trimming out those distractions, keeping somebody focused on what the call to action is and what that next step is, you improve this number right here, the conversion rate. We want to have this conversion rate up as high as we possibly can because that helps to cut down our cost per conversion. And typically, if you're sending traffic to a website, depending on how the website's designed, if it's well optimized, all that kind of stuff, uh, websites can convert, you know, probably the average is like five to 10% ish. With a landing page, you can get 20, 30, in some cases, 40%. Really depends upon the niche. But this one, uh, since August 1st of 2023, uh, averaging 29.94%, so essentially 30% on this particular landing page, that helps cut down the cost per conversion. So send your traffic to landing pages, um, don't send it to a website, unless it's a really good looking website and it's well optimized, but nine out of 10 cases, you wanted to send that traffic to a landing page. And I'll hop over to my landing page builder and show you a couple of template examples of what landing pages look like. So this is the landing page builder that I use. It's called Instapage. Um, it's a little bit more expensive. There's cheaper options. If you are just getting started, um, I'd recommend things like Landingy, lead pages, or even just build on WordPress if you have a little bit more technical knowledge. Um, but these uh, are essentially just some template designs that they have. Um, I'll just preview this one. And I can kind of walk you through really, really quick why landing pages are effective. The first thing you're going to notice is there's zero navigation on this page. So one of the issues with websites is there's so many links people can click all over the place. They can go off to social media. They can, you know, scroll through the gallery. They can look at all the different services and the more distractions that you have for somebody, the less likely they are to actually take the action you want them to take. So on a landing page, we have no navigation. It's usually just the logo. And then usually up top, it'll be a little call to action, like call for a quote and then the phone number or something like that. And the whole idea is you just want to push them towards what that next step is. You don't want to have seven different next steps on the page where somebody can become a lead or they can, um, you know, buy a gift card or they can go off to social media or this or that or whatever. You just want to be like, hey, you know, we do detailing. If you want to quote, call us, fill out a form, um, always have reviews on the page, just have some about information, all that kind of stuff. This is obviously just a template. But the whole idea is you just want to have all the information that somebody's going to need on one page, drive them to a call to action. And that is uh, landing pages kind of in a nutshell. The fourth mistake I see a lot on auto detailing campaigns is not having conversion tracking set up. Now, conversion tracking is essentially what allows you to track whether somebody called, uh, called the phone number on the ad, submitted a form, whatever your uh, conversion actions are, you know, booking an appointment, things like that. You want to make sure that you are tracking those as conversions because without that data, you're not going to know what keywords are working. You're not going to know what ads are working. You're not going to know what ad groups are working. Um, you're kind of going to be flying blind. So uh, as you can see on this account right here, I have been tracking on all my accounts. I track conversions, but this one's been tracking conversions the whole time. And you can see how this is important. I can see where my leads came from. And these are not just, you know, people that clicked on something or something like that. These are uh, phone calls from the landing page, people that clicked on the phone number on the ad and called, or people that submitted a form on the landing page to become a lead that way. And you wanna track all of these conversions um, because on the one hand, you wanna know what's working, what's not working. That's the process of optimizing a campaign. You need to be able to see what's working and not working so that you can trim things out that are kind of dragging the campaign down allocate more budget to what's actually working. And if things just aren't working, then you know, and you can start changing things and working on improving it that way. Also, on the other hand, uh, on Google's side, there's so many algorithms behind the scenes now where if you have conversion tracking set up, they start to learn what works and what doesn't. So they're gonna know what ads work, what headlines work, um, what keywords work, and they start to optimize the, cam the campaign on Google's end as well. Um, and that's super important too, because Google's really leaning towards, you know, more algorithms and AI and all that kind of stuff. So having those conversions allows you to kind of train Google uh, to know what you're looking for. So it's kind of two, two sided, helps you optimize the campaign. And it also helps Google learn, you know, what you want as a conversion. So to set those up, I have a whole video on doing this. You really just want to go up here to this little wrench uh, click on conversions, and then you can create conversion actions there. Uh, again, I'll, I'll just link that video down below for the uh, conversion tracking setup uh, tutorial. 
One of the final mistakes that I see is actually leaving auto apply recommendations on, on your account. This is not really a campaign thing. Um, I'm seeing this a little bit less and less. I think Google is by default disabling these, but there was a period in time where if you go select your uh, account level up here, you go to recommendations, you see this little auto apply option right here. I always leave these disabled, but sometimes campaigns have these enabled. And what that allows Google to do is they can just make changes automatically. Sometimes their recommendations are fine, but if you are trying to run your campaign and optimize your campaign, it's best if you don't have Google just randomly making changes. Um, like I said, sometimes it's useful. Um, you know, it can let you know if you have either like redundant keywords, duplicate keywords, if you have conflicting negative keywords, that's always helpful. But what is not helpful is if Google just randomly adds a bunch of broad match keywords to your campaign or they completely change the bid strategy automatically. That can completely throw a campaign off um, because with optimizing a campaign, there's a process to it. You don't just want to have things randomly happen. You want to make sure you're doing things systematically. And if you just have another, uh, another entity, another force just making changes to your campaign without your knowledge, um, it's not going to help. It's not going to be, it's not going to be useful. So the last thing I recommend is just make sure you go into your auto apply settings and make sure everything is turned off. All right, so those are five mistakes to avoid when it comes to running an auto detailing campaign on Google Ads. Uh, I hope you found this content helpful. Like I said, if you are interested in a more in-depth tutorial, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Uh, but if you did find this helpful, you wanna see more content like this, make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton. And um, yeah, if there's anything else you wanna see, drop it in the comments below. And I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.